expanding algebraic equations, it can be a pretty challenging skill. But in this video, I'm going to show you how you can use a model so that you can teach students how to do this and then take it even further. Algebra. It's quite abstract in its nature, and because of this, many students initially struggle with it. Let's take this question here for example, that is 3 multiplied by x plus 2. When I look at this, I think, well what does the x even mean? And quite often so do the students. And then, what do the brackets mean, and how does that all come together? Hi, my name's Tom Moore, and in this video I'm going to share with you a strategy that I've used when helping students to learn how to expand algebraic equations, and that is using a model. In order to do that though, we're going to use a very similar model to what we covered when we looked at multiplying two digit numbers using MAB. So if you haven't yet checked that video out, make sure you visit the link in the description so that you can actually see how the model works. But before we get started, let me introduce you to the model. As you can see here, I've got a number of different pieces. I have my ones, a y, an x, and an x squared, a y squared, and an xy. I'll show you how all of these interrelate as we go throughout the video. Let's start off with the question 3 multiplied by x plus 2, which we had before, and try and use the model to be able to determine what that actually is. Well, if I have 3, I'm going to grab 3 ones and place them along here like this. And then when I'm multiplying it by x plus 2, well, here's my multiplication symbol, so therefore I'm going to grab x and add 2, so I have 3 multiplied by x plus 2. Let's now go through and use the model to be able to figure out what this actually is equal to. If I want to do this, I need to have a look at, well, what is this height and what is this width? Well, that's going to be an x, isn't it? Once again, what's the same height and the width as here? So that's going to be another x. And we go through and we fill out the rest of the model. So as you can see here, for these different pieces, well, as we know, the x's went there, and then the ones go here because it's the same height as this one here, and then the same width as this one there. So when I multiply 3 by x plus 2, while well, I end up getting 3x, because I can see my 3x is there, plus 6. All right, well, what about quadratics? Well, here's how the model works when applying it to them. So let's have a look at the expression x plus 2 multiplied by x plus 1 and see what we end up getting. Well, in order to do that, I need to find, first of all, my x and two more. So I get x here and I have plus 2, so that's going to be x plus 2 goes there. And then I'm multiplying it by x plus 1. So to do that, I just grab an x and then I have plus 1. And I need to go through and use the model in the same way as I did before. But it's going to be a little bit different this time because when I have a look at this, I need to figure out, well, what's going to be the same height as an x and width of an x? Well, that's going to be an x squared, isn't it? And you can see that fits in nicely there. What's going to be the same height as a 1 and width as an x? Well, once again, that's an x, isn't it? And you can see here that another x will go underneath. But what about here? Well, it's the same height as an x and width of a 1. Well, once again, that's an x. But I just need to rotate it and put it in that direction there. And what's going to go here? Well, it's a height of 1 and a width of 1. So that's going to be 1 there, and that's also going to be 1 there. So as you can see, I've now thought about all of the different pieces. And what's happened? Well, I've got 1x squared, and I've got 3x's and then I have two more. Now some of you out there may be wondering, well, that's all well and good, but how do we then deal with negatives? Well, let me show you. If we had positive one here before, to use a negative, all we need to do is simply flip it over. And as you can see, the white now represents a negative. If you want, you could actually write negative one on it too, but quite often the students just know and they don't need to do that. Using this, if I have a negative one and a positive one there like that, or even if I want to flip it over, so they're both positives, well, if they're the same colour, I can have a black one there. Same with this, if I flip it over, and they're the same colour, it still stays black. But if they're different colours, 
well then this ends up becoming white. So that is, if this here and this here is a different colour, well then what I put here is white. If it's the same colour, this then becomes black. And that's how you deal with the positives and negatives. Let's have a look at it in action. What happens if I have x plus 2 multiplied by x minus 1? Well, let's go through and use the model to have a look at it. First of all, I need to use x plus 2. So I'll go x plus 2, I'll grab an x, and I'll do x plus 2, and then I'm going to do x minus 1. So I need an x, and then for the minus 1, I'll simply use the minus 1 that I already had there. Let's have a look. x multiplied by an x, well that's going to be an x squared, because as you can see, same height, same width, same colour, therefore it's a positive x squared. What's going to go here? Well, it's height of 1, width of an x, same colour, so therefore it's a positive x. What's going to go here? It's going to be the same again, isn't it? What about here? Well, I have a height of x and a width of 1, so I know I'm going to be dealing with an x, but because they're different colours, it then becomes a negative x. What about here? Well, height of 1, width of 1, but then because they're different colours once again, it becomes a negative 1. And then that's going to be the same there as well. So when I do this, I end up getting an x squared plus 2x minus an x minus 2. But here's the really cool thing. When we have a positive x and a negative x, they kind of like join together, go kaboom, and then disappear. So therefore, really what I get is an x squared, a positive x, and a negative 2. So therefore, my answer is x squared plus x minus 2. Now, before we even focus students into being able to expand algebraic equations, it's important that we first make sure that they can actually work with positive and negative numbers. That is, they know how to multiply, add, subtract, and divide them. Because without this knowledge, they will struggle with understanding what the model is and how it's actually working. For example, when I went through and explained it to you before, I simply said positive x multiplied by negative x. Well, that was a negative x squared because the colours are different. If they're the same, for example, negative times a negative, well, that got us a positive. Simply just telling students this isn't going to help them out with their understanding in the long run. Therefore, like I said, it's really important that students actually have this prerequisite knowledge before we actually go through and use this model or before we even look at how to actually expand algebraic equations in the first place. Now, the other thing to consider is that when I've gone through this, I've actually done it in a very fast manner. And that's for the benefit of us, the teachers, because we're all time poor. So I just wanted to show you just how far you can actually take this model. It's really important that you do take the time with your students. That is, get them to play around with things like the linear equations where you've got 3 multiplied by x plus 2. Get them to do that a number of times with the model first. Maybe get them to look for some patterns and get them to try and see how you can get from 3 multiplied by x plus 2 to 3x plus 6. And quite often students will be able to see this. Once they've figured out the patterns for themselves, they're more likely to remember it into the future. Once you've focused on doing it with the linear, try and bring in working with positive and negative numbers. And then go from there to working with quadratic equations. That is, things where you're going to result in an x squared or something along those lines. And as you do, remember to get students to look for the patterns in the maths that they're doing. So the importance of using models is to get students to go from actually having the question coming up with the answer using the model and then seeing the patterns that exist between those two points. And when they can do that and recognise how to do it without using the model, well, they're going to be able to remember it much better going into the future. Now, don't forget to like and comment. And also, if you can think of a teacher who might like this video, don't forget to tag them in the comments below. My name's Tom Moore. We'll see you next time.